Good. All right. So, whenever you have extra time, you should go over uh, sales training, sales tactics, closing, getting in the door, um, whatever is going to help the group that you're talking to. And not only does it help them, but it also helps you. All right. Sharpens them, sharpens you. So all sales managers, even if you're not a sales manager, you should get two guys together. Like for instance, let's come up here, Xavier and uh, Adrian. These guys right here are new, very new. You guys got out of high school, just graduated a couple weeks ago, was working at Pavilions, decided to come here, um, and probably further, you know, I would say add to, to what you were doing before as far as like going to work. Both of you guys, you know, both of you guys had like an hourly wage, and now it's like, you know what, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna see if I could, uh, you know, get more than the hourly wage, right? So even you two guys, not really knowing much, instead of like just waiting around or outside smoking or walking to the liquor store, come in here and practice and like kind of pick each other's brain. Like he got a deal yesterday, you know what I mean? So you could be like, hey man, how'd you get that deal? And he could be like, oh, this is, you know, I went in and she said no five times and then I ended up just sticking to the pitch and sticking, you know, to the pen and the paper and whatever. And now you're like, okay, cool. That's what I need to do when I go out. So go ahead, have a seat. So no matter if you're two new guys or Come up here, Pete, right? Or if you're a sales manager, right? Like Pete, instead of like hanging out, waiting, or I don't know, doing nothing, right? Or using your energy to do something else, you know, make sure that you're practicing your, you know, your craft with your people. So go ahead, have a seat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this time wisely. Just so you know, we're waiting on. Uh, we're supposed to. Everybody's supposed to be here at nine. It's nine forty right now. So. Um, we're waiting on Eric and Gabriel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, instead of waiting for them, I got one, two, three, four, myself included, five people, where we can share ideas and thoughts, right, and get better. So that way we're warmed up. I think just like an athlete needs a warm up, right? I don't think those guys go to the Olympics, not stretch. I don't know if you ever see Michael Phelps, but he has like a whole routine where he warms up. The stretching, the, like the, the what do you call it, the meditation, I mean, He's got everything and ready to get himself prepared to do what, go out there and then do what he does and win. So what we have to do is we got to get ourselves warmed up, right? So a lot of times in, when we have a big group, I'll get everybody partnered up, facing each other, doing their pitch, and I want it to get loud in the room to where uh, it's hard because when you have all that distraction around you, if you could just focus on your pitch and try to sell the guy that you're trying to sell while you're you know, practicing, when you go out there, it's gonna be really easy. You don't have all those fucking people making a bunch of noise. You got dogs barking, you might have a TV on, you might have cars passing by if you're working on a big main street, or you might just have um, your phone going off, getting distracted from text messages. Put it on silent. Like do anything that you can do to get yourself from not getting distracted. Because ultimately, it's you versus the customers, right? And it's really you versus you. So like if you're fucking yourself and you're sabotaging yourself by having your ringer on, by, you know, getting it distracted, like, oh, shit, I'm hungry. Look at there's four places to eat. Like, it's not time to eat. You had time. Every manager and every crew should take their crew out to eat before they go to work. And you have time. So don't, you know, be the first one out of the van. Little things like that. Be the first one out, first one in line to go eat. You know, like, hurry up and eat. Don't take your time. Like, you want to hurry up and get to the field. You want to create urgency and you want to have massive action. Like everything is geared towards, everybody's here to make money, but it seems like people aren't, like today's meeting is going to be about moving fast. So I, I watch people, I can tell by the way they're moving, by the way they're getting distracted. If they're not going from point A to point B and taking care of business, it could be something simple as lunch. If they're like, ah, uh, getting out, uh, dragging their way into the fucking place to go eat, dragging their way out, like everything just takes forever, I can tell like that guy's not really going to get anywhere. Like where's that guy really going to get? Everywhere he does, everywhere he goes and everything he does is half speed. And then I see guys that are like really, you know, excited and they're really pumped up and they're really focused and, and they're there to just like boom, boom, go from point A to point B like a laser. It's just like bam, all right, I'm gonna eat, boom, I'm done. All right, I'm in the van, I'm waiting. And then sometimes what happens is when you're waiting there, you have like this, this power inside, it's kind of like a, almost like a confidence of like, I beat everybody to the punch, I'm the first one done. So therefore, what, if that's your habit, right, what's going to happen when you go to the field? You're going to be the first one on board. You're going to get more deals than everybody throughout the week. 
you're going to get more deals than everybody in the company. Like, this is a competition. Like we talked about, it is between you and you, but ultimately, shit, if you're beating everybody out in the whole company, what is that? How does your confidence, I mean, you need confidence to sell. Where do you think your confidence level is going to be at? It's going to be sky high. You're the fucking, you're the top dog. You know, how do you think Roger's walking around? You know, he wins every fucking contest. He's walking around like, shit, these guys suck. Everybody sucks. His confidence is high. He can go out and close deals consistently throughout the year. You know, Gabriel, him, Gabriel, and th those are like the, the top dogs, like every year, for the last couple years. Those are the top producers. And those guys are walking around, you know, like just no nonsense. You don't see them taking breaks. You don't see those guys taking smoke breaks. You don't see those guys, you know, hanging out, lollygagging. You know, and those, those are two young guys. <clears throat> you know, they got their shit together. They know what they want. So they're going straight after what they want, and that's it. And, and guess what? You get more free time like that. Guess what? You're not stressed out. Guess what? You're ahead. You know, so, you know, and you got the confidence. So every day you're going out, you got more and more confidence. And you're going to kill it. You know, when I was out there just running a team, it was like, there was no nonsense. It's like, here, we're going to go fucking eat. Hurry the hell up. I'll tell everybody, hurry up, man. Like, you know, we're not taking the, Sometimes, yeah, we're going to sit down. We'll go into Denny's or something and sit down and actually take an hour or two for lunch. All right, no big deal. But that's not every day. That's not an everyday mentality. It was like, shit, hurry up, go fucking eat and get your ass back in the van because it's not about I'm trying to be a dick. It's about we need to go take care of business. You know, and a lot of those guys that I took, now they're managers. Look, they're all managers. And they're all making, you know, pretty good money. All those guys I took out. Some of them, not everybody, but most of them are. And now, you know, they understand that mentality and it's like, oh, shit, all right, I got to take my team. And, and you know what, if you're going to, don't use Monday as like a, a travel day. I'm tired of seeing that. Like, guys are like fucking taking Monday to travel. Like, if you're going to take a day to travel, take Sunday. Put that to my day off. You don't have days off as a business owner. Like, get that through your head already. Or don't get into this. If you think like you're here to have days off, you're not going to make it. Because one day off takes, turns into two, turns into three, turns into four. I'm seeing guys take off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And they're never going to get nowhere. Go ahead and do that for a whole year, and you will be in the same place you probably less than a year from now. I guarantee you, you'll never get ahead taking four days off. There's seven days in a week. That's taking more than fucking half of the week off. How the hell are you going to get somewhere if you're just taking day after day off? Like, it's cool. Like, you got a million dollars in the bank already. You got to hustle. So, make sure that you use your time wisely. I think right now, this is a good time for us to you know, go over sales tactics. How do you get in the door? You know, I always tell people, you should be able to sell. You should be so good, Adrian. <coughs> that you can sell without talking. So you should be able to go into the house, like a mime. You ever see a mime, how they, how they talk? Right, they don't talk. They use their hand movements, they use their body language. So it's like, I don't care if I was out there today, this is a Spanish brochure, right? It's an old school. Oh, but that's not the new one, this is the old one. I don't give a fuck if it has the right number on it or if it has the right address, English, Spanish, it don't matter. I can guarantee you, and I don't think anybody would bet against me, but I would bet Whatever anybody wanted to bet that I could go get a same day, an English same day with this Spanish brochure. I know I could. You know? Oh, I don't like that brochure. I like the other one. I mean, come on, man. It don't matter. I can go out there with this and this in my hand. All right? And I can go get a same day. I know I could. I know I could. And I know nobody would bet against me because they know I could too. So the question is, can you go out there and do it with this in your hand? And if the answer is no, then you have a lot of fucking, you know, you got a lot to learn. You should be trying to learn as much as you can. And if you know you can, then that's the confidence you should have when you have the right stuff in your hand, you know? So it don't matter. I can go out there with, with this in my hand. You know, I, I did one, I'll tell you a good story. One time we were in California City, all right? It wasn't mobile homes, it wasn't seniors homes. I was out in homes, okay? I know everybody thinks it's impossible to sell homes, but it's not. It's easier. So I'm out in homes, okay, and it's easier for me to manage because I get to drop somebody up to the park and meet them in the front. To be honest, that's how this really started. But fucking homes. Now, right now, if you think about it, like yesterday, we went out, and the guy who sold the most was in homes. Fucking Eric. Eric sold too. So listen, you got to be able to sell with anything. Okay, no excuses. And I told this fucking, the, the crew, because I seen them, they're all like, where are we going? Oh, man, I could tell by their body language and the man, they didn't want to work where we were working. 
They didn't like it. We were there the day before. Nobody really did good. So I said, come on. I took the whole crew in at house with me. And before we went in, I said, watch this. I'm going to give this guy, because we just came from lunch, and I, had a, I don't know why I had a ketchup. Oh, no, I was in the van. There was like a little hot sauce or ketchup packet, packet, the little ones, from my McDonald's or whatever. And I said, watch, I'm going to give this guy this. I'm going to hand him this for free. I was just making a mockery of the whole thing. And I'm going to sign this house up. And everybody's going to come in. I have six or seven guys in the house with me, the whole crew. And they're looking at me like, it's, you know, you're crazy. He's like, you're not going to be able to do that. I knocked on the door. This guy would not let me in his house. He kept knocking. He's like, no, I'm not going to let you in my house. You know, I don't care what you got. Not to mention, he sees five or six guys, seven guys total probably behind me. So I kept talking and talking. He's like, here, here you go. Here. I'm holding this thing. And the guy's just looking at me. He's like, what's that? And here's the funniest part of all. The thing was used. It was like halfway used. It, was, it had a little, a little bite mark in it. It was open. He, I mean, I had to cover it, but I was like holding it. True story. And I was like, here you go. He's like, what's this? I go, I don't know. They told us to give these out. Um, it's probably one of our sponsors or something. He's just like, okay. So once he opened up the door and he had it in his hand, he was looking at it. He was really like, what is this? Then he was like, what do you want? Because I'm not telling him we're selling alarms. That's not your job, right? You don't tell him I'm selling, I'm here to sell you an alarm. Would you like to buy an alarm? It's none of that. So I'm just looking at this guy, and I'm like, well, I got to come in, and I got to fill out a form. So now by this time, his wife got up. It gave her enough time to like, what's going on? We're in the middle of nowhere, in the desert, small populated city. We're in a home, pretty nice sized home, nice house, right? And this lady finally gets up after all this ruckus, right? All this time, me at the door for at least five minutes now of, of saying, you know, him telling me no, 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 no. I'm just finally, I'm like, you know what, here. <laughs> you know, he opens up the door. He's like, what's this? And I gave it to him. He's like, what is this for? All pissed off. And I'm like, I don't know. They told us to hand these out. Maybe it's a sponsor of ours. I don't know. He's like, this is weird. He said, this is unusual or something like that, right? So next thing I know, his wife comes. Now that the door's open, she starts walking over there. What's going on? And I'm like, hey, how you doing? I got to come in and do your paperwork. She's like, well, let him in. <laughs> she tells her husband, let him in. Then I found out right then and there who ran the show. It was the wife. Right? This guy's taking advantage, supposedly acting like he runs the show, acting like a tough guy at the door. It all made sense now. He's acting like a tough guy with me because his wife's asleep. This is the only chance to go out and you know, act like a big... Now, the wife comes, and now he's like, okay, well, let him in. So I come in. I go, I got a bunch of trainees that, you know, are out here. And they're looking at me like I'm nuts. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, one after another. She ends up being a nice lady. Well, hi, everybody. He goes back to his room. <laughs> he goes back to his room, his head down, with the ketchup packet right now. <laughs> I think he even took a little taste of it. I don't know. <laughs> but now all the guys are in. Six, seven of us. California City. Nice. Probably a 3,500 3, square foot brand new home. Nice home. Right? Probably the nicest home on the whole block. And I went there for a reason because I know everybody's like, you can't sell that one. So I'm like, fuck you. I'll sell anywhere. So, boom. Everybody's in the house. All the stars are lining up. Right? We're all sitting around the table. I look up at the wall. And I see a picture of somebody in the President of the United States, Bill Clinton. I'm like, who's that? And she goes, oh, you don't know who my son is? And I'm like, no. She goes, you ever heard of the song, I Swear? And I'm like, yeah. That's like when I was in high school or something, right? I swear by the moon and the stars in the sky. You ever heard that song? I'll be there. That's her fucking son. That whole fucking people that sing that song, they're all from California City in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, no shit. I'm like, now I'm really like, it's not even part of the sales pitch. I really am excited. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. She brings me to this little room in their house. They have this big fucking nice house. And this one room has like all the trophies in there. I think they even won a Grammy or something. They got all these fucking trophies, all these pictures, of, you know, with a bunch of famous hey, people. Name, right? No. I forgot. I'll think of the name of the group. But anyways, now it's over. We're walking around the house. Now the husband comes out. He's like bipolar or something. Now he comes out in a good mood. He's like, oh, yeah, that's my son. You know, he's all proud. And I'm just asking question after question. So they're actually from here. Oh, yeah, three of them are. Two of them from, I don't know. Somebody discovered them in L.A., blah, blah, blah. They're probably three hours from L.A., you know, like, they're in the middle of nowhere. So now, after all that, 
We go back to the living room and then guess what they ask me? So, what is all this? What are you here for? It's over. I go, oh, I just got to finish your, your paperwork. And this is perfect. Now I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to protect the whole house, all the awards, all the pictures. You can't replace that. So, you know, like, <laughs> done deal. Boom. Oh, great. I need this. In a town where there's fucking drug addicts walking around in every fucking corner. I mean, the worst of the worst live in California City. Sounds like a good city, though. California City. Good name. <laughs> you go there, it's like, yeah, the worst of the worst. They ship people there to get the hell out of you. Like, fuck you, you're the worst. You go live over there. <laughs> you know, so my point is, you can't give up. You gotta be persistent. You gotta know that when you go to a house, some way, somehow, like, there's gonna be something. There's gonna be a window of opportunity that's gonna open for you. All you need is a little crack. That's it. That's it. It's like putting on, I mean, what do you do when you're, when it's 105 degrees outside and you're in your car and you got the AC on and you hear like a little noise, like a draft noise in the back, right? What is that? The window's cracked, right? What do you do? Leave it open? And let the hot air come in? Or do you close it? Yeah. And that's the same way. That little opportunity is all you need. You got to hurry up and get in before the owner closes it because the owner's going to realize like, oh shit, I got to close this. I got to protect my investment. When you're driving with the AC on, you got to protect your investment. You're, I mean, you're blowing cold air. Why the hell are you going to open and crack the back window or the front window and let hot air in? You got to invest, right? Your investment. Your investment is you've been running that air. And if you got a car that sucks where the air conditioning takes forever, you definitely got to close everything because now it takes another 15 minutes for it to get cold. You got a brand new car, you know, cools up quicker. So that's the same, that little opportunity, that little crack, that little opening. That's all you're looking for. So you're looking for them basically to make a mistake. So when you're selling, if they're a strong customer, it's not a lay down, and it's a tough customer, guess what? All you need to do is keep going and keep going and keep going, and they're going to make a mistake. Sooner or later, they're going to say something or they're going to do something that's going to give you that little crack and that little opportunity for you to take advantage of and just get in the house. That's a hell of a fucking habit to have. If you're going out there selling all day and you're just looking for the easy one, the easy one, you're not going to get very far in this job. You're not going to get very far, period. You're not going to get far in life. You're not going to be a good manager. You're not going to be nothing because you're always the person that just gives up really easy and you want everything done really easy. And you're never going to get a team like that. I mean, where are you going to go around and hire people for this fucking crazy job and they're just going to all stick and all stay and you're going to keep growing, you know, one by one. By the end of the year, you're going to have 100 guys. It don't work like that. You need to create little opportunities. You need to go out there and recruit like a maniac, and then people are going to mess up. I mean, people are going to come in, and they're going to mess up. I mean, I hate to say it, but they're going to come in, and the next thing you know, they're going to come into the meeting. And the next thing you know, they're going to hear this, and then they're going to get excited, and they're going to see the nice cars out there, and then they're going to go out, they're going to go into the van, and they're going to see people selling. And they're going to see some guy make $1,000, and then that's all they need to see. That's that opportunity. Now they're changed forever. Or they could be on the group message. He didn't come in. He's like, fuck this. But he hears this, oh, what the fuck, this guy. I mean, Xavier's probably the final straw. He's like, Xavier's getting deals. No, oh, shit, I'm coming in. And nothing against Xavier, but he's not a salesman. He's not, you know, he's not like me up here talking. I mean, but this is like 30 years of sales experience. You know, He's got 30 days. But if a guy with three hours of sales experience or two hours or one hour can sell, we hired a guy yesterday. Remember that guy, what was his name? Uh, Curtis. Curtis. We hired a guy named Curtis yesterday. Like six foot four or something, big old tall dude. And the whole time, he had a suit on the whole time. I'm thinking, and everybody's in the band's agreeing. They're like, he's going to get one today. We're all saying, like, oh, yeah, he's going to get one. Gabriel's going to show him a deal, and then he's going to go get one. And we're all like, he's going to get one, huh? He ended up not make, making it to work. His girlfriend told him you can't go, go to work with him. Got punked out. But the whole time, we're like, yeah, he can get one. And I can guarantee you, we're all thinking the same thing. Adrian can get one today. Right? Like, we know he's going to get one. We know he's, he's going to get one. We know he's going to get one. We know, so, and we know Eric's going to get one. So think about that. When you got fucking six, seven guys in a van, and you're naming all six guys, and then the guy that probably has the least experience, you're just going to get one just by hanging around guys that are getting one. <laughs> so it's, like, contagious. You know, that's how you run a team. You want a team that everybody sells? Well, then guess what you got to do? You got to get, like, two or three guys that fucking start selling, and then you, they got to be consistent, and then you work on the other guys that can't sell, and just make sure you, whatever you got to do, walk with them, push them, text them, whatever it is. 
All you need is that little opportunity, just like selling, same thing. So you're selling all day long, you're selling customers, you're selling the guys in your team. You know, you got to sell the person on the phone, you know, stay on the line, stay on the, you got to sell the installer, hurry up, get over here. You know, you got to tell scheduling, you got to sell them to fucking get the installer to go there, right? You're selling everybody, then you got to sell the customer, they got a doctor's appointment, but you know what, you need them to stay and miss that doctor's appointment. Can you miss this? We need to get in, we, we got to get you protected. We're selling, we're selling, we're closing, we're closing, we're selling, we're closing, we're selling, we're closing. There you go. You do that all day long like a maniac, and I guarantee you're going to get somewhere. And not one day out of the week either. And if you're one of these weak fucks that can only work hard three days out of the week, well, then you better start coming in around people like me that are, and people like us, right? Our team works every fucking week. We ain't got a lame team. We ain't got one of these teams that are going to miss Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Like we're, like, we're all in. Today's Friday, but it feels like a Monday morning meeting right now. The energy's off the hook. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. You know, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not, I don't give a shit what, what day it is. I don't care what month it is. I don't give a fuck about the weather. I don't give a shit about nothing. All I know is today, I'm going to be a maniac. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to do what I do. And that's what you got to do. You got to do, right? There's no feelings involved. Stop looking around. Oh, man, did you hear there was a big accident on the 91 freeway? Like, man, you're fucking in the, your mind is in the wrong place. When I hear people talking like that, I'm like, shit. Who gives a shit? What? What is that supposed to mean? What? What? It, I mean, you gotta go over there and sign everybody up or something? I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? You should be zoned in on what you gotta do. You should be trying to figure out ways to get that little crack, that window, that little opportunity, and you should start figuring out how to get that done at every house. Because every home, I'm telling you right now, you can create that opportunity. There's not one house in America you can't create that opportunity. I don't care. I've been to homes where there's no car in the parking lot. The gate's closed. There's a fucking uh, a chain around the gate, right? There's two pit bulls barking at me. The door's locked. There's a two pad. I mean, I've seen two chains, right? With fucking two locks. No car. Fucking go to South Central. Go to Watts and see the houses over there. They got the fucking, the, the bars on the window. Behind the bars, there's another set of fucking screens, behind those screens there's another you can't even see in, and then they got the one where the porch goes all the way around like, go knock over there that's how I learned how to fucking sell so, you know, you gotta get through four layers of security before you even get to a person that's probably what made me so persistent, that's what made me so persistent it's because, fuck, you're not knocking doors over there and people are just letting you in they got four layers of security, and then when you get to the person they're like, what do you want? Who are you? What? They don't even say hello. They say what? <laughs> you know? So now you gotta deal with that. How do you create a window of opportunity on after all that? You gotta get really creative, you gotta be really persistent, you gotta believe in yourself. Because I guarantee you, if I drop a weak salesman off there, they're done, they can't even run a credit. I used to bring my crew over there just to train them, just to get them ready to go to the desert to where it's easier. As we're here, we're gonna go to South Central for a week. Wait, what the fuck? We've been doing so good in, in uh, Palm Springs. And I'm like, you're not tough enough yet. I got to toughen you guys up. I need you guys to get tougher. And, you know, I'm trying to hit 50, 60 a week, you know, with a fucking eight-man team. It's possible. If you got a, a, you know, a whole van full of killers. So you got to get really creative over there. Right? Pete's knocked over there for years. Right? It's a lot different. But doesn't it teach you to be creative? And doesn't Absolutely. now doesn't it make sense? Like, damn, it makes you really persistent, you know? And I used to have to knock there at night. It was before alarms. I was selling out there because I was a kid. So it's like, you know, you gotta get really persistent. Then you're dealing with people that their whole life they you know, they've been on probably government assistance or they've probably been getting paid peanuts, so their whole mentality is they don't have no money. So how do you get somebody that's been broke in their mind their whole life, a poor man's mentality? Security everywhere for you. Like, no trust. They hate everybody. They think everybody's trying to put them in jail. You know, you think they think you're a cop. Like, you know, boom, 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 boom. You're dealing with that. So, how do you do it? Gotta figure out a window. How do you get in the door? I'll sit there and shake the fucking gate. Shake the gate, guys. Kick the gate. Hello, hello, hello. Sooner or later, they're gonna come. Sooner or later, they're gonna open. I guarantee it. If you know somebody that you hear a TV, you heard something, you seen a shadow move, I mean, it's anything. That's a deal. Every house is a deal. 
You know why I don't walk away from those homes? Because I know, like, I'm an idiot. How am I going to teach all you guys how to be creative and how to push and all this stuff? I tell you guys, and I'm not doing that. All I need to see is, I mean, anything. If I see any, hear anything, any kind of movement, I'm staying there. I'm not leaving. It's kind of like that house that you hit, that one where you said, this is a deal. Nobody answered and went back and got it over there, Golden Valley or something. That's good. That might be a me. Same thing. You know, it's like you have that feel like, oh, this is a deal. It could be the ugliest house on the block. Grass this high. <coughs> no car in the parking lot. Good, I'm thinking no car. Oh, that's a disabled person. I'm going to offer them a ride to the store. That's I'm thinking like, oh, okay. I'm not thinking like, oh, I need to make money. I'm thinking, how? Oh, shit, how can I get this person to come to the door? Because I'm thinking nobody else is going to be as persistent as me. Everybody else is going to walk away from this home. That's why I know it's a deal, because everybody else, 99 out of 100 salesmen are going to walk away from this one. For sale sign, I don't give a fuck. If I look at a for sale sign, and it looks like it's been there for like a year or two, like you can tell it's old, they're not selling the home. They ain't sold the home yet, they're not selling the home. And I'll tell them, what do we tell them? They move. You get a free move, right? Oh, I just sold the home. Perfect. We're going to put it in today. Yeah, but I move tomorrow. It don't matter. It goes with you. So you're telling me you're going to do all the work today? Just Yes. <laughs> Absolutely yes. You're in control. You have to be that certain. You can't go in there and go, oh yeah, you're right, huh? Yeah, let's put it in the new address. You know what's going to happen? It ain't going to go in. They're going to be doing all the moving. They're going to move to the new address, and they're going to call you and say, you know what? Nah, you know what? We decided not to do this. We don't need it. You have to put it in now, today. There is no tomorrow. You can't go around you know, trying to close people, sell it. You, think how much energy are you spending to close it? For what? For it to not go in? Right? It's like, you're up to bat. You know what happens if you, let me tell you something. You hit a home run over the fence. It's a home run, right? But if you go around and you run the bases and you miss second base and you go all the way in the dugout and the coach from the other team sees that and goes, go get the ball, go get the ball and gets the ball and goes over there and tags you, right? And everybody's like, what the hell's going on? Well, guess what? That guy's out. They're going to go to the replay. Now they have replay in Major League Baseball, and they're going to go, what the hell's going on? Go to the second review, and they're going to go, they're going to watch the tape, and they're going to say, oh, shit, that guy did it. You know, he missed second base. He's out. Hit it over the fence, but it's, he's out. No home run. Take back the run. Crowd starts booing, you know? And that guy did everything right to the end. <laughs> And that's the same thing that you can do. You can get the deal, you can do all this that I'm telling you to do, and you don't get it installed, or you wait, or you listen to that customer. Like, you just push that customer around for the last 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and told them what to do, and then you get weak at the end. Oh, you gotta get a check. Oh man, I don't wanna ask them for their social. I don't wanna ask them for a check. I don't wanna ask, I don't wanna bother them right now. They say they go to bed late. I would say 90% of all my installs go in that have been in in the last six years, okay? 90% of them didn't want them in that day. But I'll get them in. You know what, Travis? You know, especially when they're already pissed off that I made them get it. They're like, you know what? This is their, you know why they're telling you this? Because this is their way out. They're looking for a window of opportunity too. They're looking for a fucking way and a reason to say, you know what? I don't need this shit either. And they're gonna sign up that day to get you out and they're gonna fucking call in as soon as they can to say they don't want it no more. And you just wasted all that time and you did everything right until the end. And you should, you should fucking get the cancel. Don't get all mad. Don't wake up and all pissed. I don't know why they cancel. I don't know why the office let them cancel. Like, yeah, the office let them, you let them cancel. The office didn't let them cancel. You did. You didn't fucking put it in. Oh, well, the installer said he doesn't want to go late. Every one of you guys have the number of the installer, and if you don't, you're an idiot. You should get it. And you tell them, you know, here, man, I'll give you $20 to go. But it's at midnight. I'll give you $100 then, whatever. <laughs> Shit. You know, pay them $10 a week <laughs> for 10 weeks. And tell me that ain't worth the same day. Like, just do the math. You want something or you want nothing? Like 15 times. An hour, that's a long fucking time. I change my mind every two minutes. 30 times I was in a good mood and bad mood within an hour. Shit. You know? Shit, all you gotta do is kept wait another 15 minutes or two minutes or three minutes. I would switch up. Nah, man, we ain't going there. Oh, I guess we're gonna go. I'm driving to Malibu now. Why are we working in Malibu? Oh, you don't like more? I will go to Oxnard, you know? I'll figure it out. 
change my mind, but guess what? I'm gonna change their mind up too. I'm gonna wait around for them to change their mind up. Let me tell you something. Fucking drop the anchor today. Go into the house and drop the anchor and don't leave. Drop the motherfucking anchor and let them know that. You know what? This fucking boat is here to stay. It's here. And yeah, you know, and it's gotta be a heavy, strong anchor. Drop a heavy, strong fucking anchor. Not a little beef one where a little wave pushes pushes you out. <laughs> Nothing can push you out. Drop that big fucking anchor today, okay? And when they try to push you out of there, and they're gonna blow, and they're gonna make a big storm and everything. It's gonna be a category six hurricane, you know? And that fucking thing ain't moving. And it ain't moving. That vessel right there, it's gonna rock around. It's gonna look, you know, water's gonna splash over you, everything's gonna happen, but it ain't moving. And when I guess what happens when that storm passes? They're gonna be sitting there going, God damn, I gave them everything I had. What, 85 year old lady? <laughs> What did she, what did she do? You know? I like when they try to raise their voice. They're like, I said no. I don't say no. They don't even have enough. <laughs> yeah, they don't even have enough energy for the last, you know. They're running out of breath. Like, I so if you don't, I'm telling you right now. Like, you know, they don't even got the energy. And you're like, they're like raising their voice in their hand, and you're like, oh, okay, I'll leave you alone. You know, you're getting all fucking afraid of that. Like, come on, man. Are you kidding me? That's a joke. You don't deserve to get a deal. You don't deserve to make any money even from that. Our job is to get deals. Our job isn't to go out there and like and, and get pushed around. <laughs> yeah, our job is to get pushed around. Like, yeah, right. Come on, you guys. You know, understand what you mean. So let me get into this real quick. Fuck, what is let this shit go? That's what you're supposed to be part of the video. Today's 7-28-17. Had a theme song, everything. Guess that's the shit. Man. So, Ruben, good job. You got three yesterday. Big dog, big dog, Ruben. Dog, dog. They got eight. Benjamin, two. Chris, three. Northern Cali up there. Isaiah, one. So, good job. What's that? Six, seven, eight, nine. They got nine yesterday. Good shit. All right? DQ would have got two. That would have been 11. What the fuck are you doing? All right? So, come on, DQ. All right? Some familiar names. I don't see you up here. Where's, you know, DQ? Where's the Deshaun? You know, right? Come on, you guys. Where's Angel? Ra Raul got one. Good job, Raul. Xavier got one. Good shit. Xavier's back. Got his first throw back. Same day. All right? You closed them, right? You going to close another one today? Come on. Get in there. Like, I shouldn't have to, like, come on. Get up here. Imagine how many deals you get. Falls behind you just all day long. Can Pretty you picture shit. this? Well, come on. Yeah. Man, what the fuck's wrong with you? Get in that fucking house and go sell them, right? Imagine how many deals would you get? Falls just there all day for eight hours just barking at you. <laughs> how many? How many? Yeah. Three, three same days at day. least. That's what you got to do. You yeah. got to pretend I'm there barking at you. Right? What was the meaning of it? Kick your own ass. You don't need me to be there to push you. Kick your own ass. Yell at yourself, you know? Um, Raul, Xavier, Kyrell. And Esme's not scheduled, so I don't know why he didn't schedule. But schedule that fucking deal, Kyrell. Kyrell's a closer. You ever seen that guy? Yeah, he's a smooth operator, man. Kyrell. Yeah, he's, the, uh, he's uh, Deshaun's buddy. Black dude. Oh, yeah, Kyrell, yeah, man. Yeah. You know that ain't a white guy, Kyrell. You know that ain't a Mexican, you know, Kyrell. I don't know. Kirel? I don't know. It could be Kirel. Kirel. Right? Kirel. What you guys say? Yeah, Kirel Benacor. You know what I mean? What the fuck is that? Three Tells me he's born in Mexico yesterday. I'm like, what the fuck? Benacor born in Mexico. I was like, God, this guy's good. All right? So, I like it, though. It's strong. So, um, Eric, speaking of Eric, right? Benacor got two yesterday. Good shit, Eric. I don't know. Where are you at? Duarte? Yeah. Yeah, Dorothy. I told him too. I seen him. He was pissed. He didn't want to get out. He's like, where are you guys going? I saw him reading his Bible. City of Hope. What do you mean I'm getting out? I said, go out oh. there and tell him about City of Hope. <laughs> I used to work here 16, 17 years ago and get deals up the ad. I did. That was a true story. Never lied to you, man. I got time to lie. I don't make no money lying to you guys. I'm going to go lie to this. <laughs> Actually, I don't even lie to the customers really. I really don't. Right? So, it ain't about lying. It's about pushing. <laughs> Creativity, right? Eric, too. Ernesto, good shit. Ernesto, Ernesto, pretty consistent. Come on, Ernesto. Big rest, uh, rest of the year, second half of the year. Big Gabe, Gabriel, good job. He's on board. I know he's going to finish strong this year. Fernando, good shit for a dog. Uh, Peter, and that's not scheduled. He said, I don't know, it could be, you got to call the office, make sure it's in. It's I know you scheduled it, but make sure it's in. And the Kyrells, too, could yeah, be scheduled, too. That. Could it be, maybe not show, I don't know. It's easy. Yeah, I'll say, yeah. Hmm. All you gotta do is go out, knock ten doors, and you'll get you'll get a deal. No matter what, it's easy. 
Fuck no. <laughs> Can we erase this? <laughs> it's never going to be easy. Stop thinking it's going to be easy because it's never going to get easier. It's never going to be. It's never going to get easier. It's going to get harder. It's going to get harder. When you're new, you don't know shit. You just go out there and listen to this meeting. Go do it. And you follow instructions. You get deals. Then you start hanging around this guy and this guy in the company. He's telling you, oh, you should do it like this. And don't listen to him. Yeah, don't listen to me. I got every sales record, but don't listen to me. Don't listen to the guy that writes one deal a week. There you go. <laughs> Why are you listening to him? Because he's telling you it's easy. Everybody gets sold on free and easy. It's that easy. You know what I mean? You're like, what? Well, what? Well, easy here. I want to go over here. I want to go to easy land. Yep. This guy's over here telling me it's tough. I don't want to go with him. I'll stick there for a week. But I want to go to Easy Land next week. <laughs> Easy Land don't make no money. Easy Land don't get you nowhere. Easy, you're never going to get nowhere. So let's get it done, guys. Let's be tough because we know it's tough. Let's fight out there. No matter if you're in Northern California, Arizona, I don't care where, where you're working, right? It ain't easy nowhere. That's bullshit. Easy. It's not easy anywhere. And, and, and there's no such thing as, oh, it's going to be easy. You know, I don't care if you got three yesterday, don't be in your three today, same area. How many times have you done that? You have a big day in one area, you go, oh, I'm going back, I found the spot. Then you go back the next day, two of those cancel. Then you go back, first one, police come, you know, now you're like, yeah, real easy. <laughs> right? I found the spot, everybody. Drop me off where you dropped me off yesterday. I like that one. You dropped me off where you dropped me off yesterday, T. That was the spot. That's the <laughs> that was the easiest place I ever went. Right when you walk in, woo! <laughs> no, we've been waiting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so understand, you gotta lace it up tight every day. You gotta fucking right. You gotta be ready every day. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be very tough. That's my meeting. I'm not gonna record the whole, uh, you know, all of our goals and stuff, guys, because they don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> they want to hear the meeting. But anyways, everybody have a great day. Go ahead, turn it off, Xavier. And uh, hopefully once the day comes back to the train. All right? And then I'll see everybody soon. Let's get into our goals, guys. Thank you.